believe, God. We're able to do, oh God, great things because you are with us, Lord. Yes, you Lord. You promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Oh God, you promise, oh God, that you will be with us even till the end. Lord, we thank you, God, for your precious promises that you've given unto us. So, God, continue to bless the people, God. Yes. Bless those that are with us, oh God. Let your blood cover, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let your angels yes. camp around about us, oh yes. Lord. Oh God, let the Holy Ghost have free course in our lives, oh God. We thank you, Father, for the full coverage of God. We thank you, God, for you being with us, oh God, and never leaving us or forsaking yes. us, oh God. Hallelujah, God, when our hearts are overwhelmed, you'll lead us to a rock. That's higher than us, so God, we give you praise, give you glory, give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, Amen. 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 You see the presence of the Lord. We say praise the Lord tonight. Praise God. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. We thank God that we are continuing in our lesson in the book of Galatians. So glad you could be with us on tonight here at Praise Temple. Uh, tonight we're going to begin in chapter 4 in the book of, of, of the book of Galatians. Amen. We've been talking all year in the Pauline epistles, and we're to chapter 4 in the book of Galatians. And Paul is continuing talking about, amen, bringing those in who are not like us. Amen? Amen. 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 And here now he's going to go on and, and continue to build his case for the churches at Galatia. Remember, the church at Galatia was a region. It was not one church, right. such as Ephesus or Philippi or Thessalonica. This was a region of churches. That, that came together and Paul wrote that letter and that letter would go to, from church to church in that area and they would read it, amen, and see what was going on this time. So now uh, we've been, uh, the, we were in chapter 3 for a while and, and, and I was sharing with the church, chapter 3 becomes a powerful uh, uh, piece of your faith, amen, who you are in God. And tonight we're going to build upon that Amen. Faith, praise God, because when we read chapter 3, if we go back just very quickly and take a quick look at chapter 3, uh, we see that we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. We found out that there's neither bond nor free. That's right. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Yeah. There's neither male nor female, but we're all one in Christ. Amen? Amen. And we also are heirs according to the promise. And today we're going to talk about being an heir according to the promise of God. Abraham Praise the Lord. God made a promise to. Amen. And the promise he made Abraham was an everlasting promise. Amen. And the promise, praise God, Abraham is alive and well today. Amen. And we have access to the promise of Abraham through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, so we have everything has to be about Christ in our lives. Christ, we are, we are, we, we are uh, I'm not ashamed to be called Jesus only. Amen. 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 We have to look to Christ, praise God. Because in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. He's the one that died for me. He's the one that rose for me. He's the one that saved me. Amen. He's the one, praise God, that poured out his spirit into my life. He's the one, praise God, that's walking beside me. Amen. He's the one, praise God, that's going to come back for me. Amen. Amen. And he's the one I'm going to spend eternity with. Amen. Amen. So I ought to be Christ-centered, Christ-focused. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that becomes a, a hallmark of the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the head. We are the body. Amen. Amen. So now, now we're going to talk about how uh, we are integrated into the family and the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, and that begins with chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And as I said before, I got the, the scriptures on the screen are just for a guide because in your Bible there are different sections inside of a chapter. So this is like one section. The first section are stands of, which can kind of convey a complete idea. Amen. And, and in your Bible you might see a little script on the outside that looks like a backwards P and a line. That means there's a little section of the script, so, so the scripture has been kind of divided into, into ideas, so we can kind of look at them in whole, in totality, see exactly what, what, the, what the word is trying to say to us. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's read Galatians 4, 1 through 5, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Amen? Amen. He says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors unto the time appointed of the Father. Verse 3. Even, Even so, we, when we are children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption 
of sons. Can we say amen? Amen. So now Paul is now beginning to go on, he says, about being this heir of salvation that he, that he equated to in chapter 3. Now he says, he says, now I say that their heir, as long as he's a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. What does that talk to us about? It talks to us, praise God, about there, there comes a time, amen, of, of once, there's, there's this time, a concept of coming of age in God. Amen. We have to come of age of God. Uh, and, and, and Paul uses the example, amen, of a child being an heir. Now, an heir is promised everything in the house. But because the heir is not a full age, he does not know how to manage that that those material goods. Amen? Amen. And, the, and the people and the resources until he is trained and the father determines that now he is able to be able to take charge of what's going on in the house. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So the heir, praise God, is nothing different than from a servant. The servant is in the house, but the servant has a specific purpose. Praise the Lord in the house, but the servant is, does, is not an heir to the promises of the Father. Amen. 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 So you have to ask yourself, praise God, amen, are you, praise God, a servant or are you an heir? Amen. amen. I'm a servant. I mean, I'm, I'm an heir. I'm not a servant. Amen. I, I'm, 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 I am heir of salvation. Amen. And so are you being in Christ. Amen. Amen. We have to get out of the servanthood mentality. Praise God, coming in the house of God, doing things in the house of God, but not receiving the true promises of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, there's a there, there, there are people who will come to church and because it makes them feel good. Right. Mm -hmm. They'll come to church because it, it helps clear their conscience. Mm -hmm. They'll come to church, praise God, because they, they do it just enough to be able to maintain the life that they're living. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you, you have to come to a place, and that's what I mean by come. There has to come to an age of time where I'm no longer going to allow. The world to dictate the church, but allow the church to dictate my world. Amen. Amen. Too many people let the let the world dictate the church in their lives. Well, I gotta ask myself my question: Is the church influencing my life, or is my life influencing the church? Mm. And the question should be that the church in me and the church I go to is influencing every aspect of my life. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 So that, there's this thing of coming of age, praise God. Amen. In the Roman culture and in ancient cultures, there was a time where young men and young women would become adults. Mm -hmm. Praise God. There were set times, praise God, in Jewish custom. Praise God. We call them bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs. Amen. They call, they call these times of men where these young boys and young girls become men and women. A time where they become adults. In, in, in the Roman culture, the time where uh, 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 the, the, the father, praise God, would literally take his toga, come on, the body, and give it to the son. And when he did that, now, praise God, the son would drop off his clothing and take on the father's clothing. And when he does that, amen, that means that he becomes, amen, a man in the eyes of the family. Amen. Amen. There are these designated times, praise God, when, the, when people have to come of age. Amen. And Paul is talking about this coming of age. Amen. And praise God. But this, but that does not occur for a slave or a servant. Amen. Amen. Praise God. A servant or a slave maintains their particular status. Amen. And God is, is, is trying, and Paul is using this analogy today when he says there's nothing, when he's young, there's nothing than a servant. But guess what? But, amen, he's under what? Tutors and governors until what? The time that, that the father says, guess what? It's time to make a change. Here, once again, we see the importance of, of, of powerful and positive leadership in the life and the development of any believer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Father, praise God, is the one that dictates the tutors and the governors. Amen. And then when he's, when the Father says it's time for him to make this transition, or she makes this transition, then he's the one that has the final say. It is God that has the final say. Amen. It is God that has the final say in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Though God has given us natural leaders, Amen. And natural fathers, praise God. God is still the one that gives the final say-so of where I am in my spiritual life. Amen. Because at the end of the day, the Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you've been called to a ministry or called to a work, there should be some fruits of your labors. Amen. 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 Praise God. So people come to me saying, well, I want to go pastor. I want to go do something. I'm like, hey, if that's what God calls you to do, 
Go do it. Praise God. But sooner or later, there should be some fruits from you going out and doing some stuff. Amen. Not just you and your family. Amen. I'm messing up, D.A. I'm messing up. <laughs> Not just you and the ones. God should what? Add to it. Yeah. It should grow it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. He should, he should, you should be some fruits. If you are an evangelist, praise God, people should be what? You should be evangelizing, and people should be getting saved. Amen. Being converted. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. If you call yourself to be a, a bishop, praise God. A bishop, amen, should have some, he should be out building and, and being over some churches. Not just your own local church. See, 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 see we have to know, praise God, that, that God validates who he sends. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And if God, had watched, and if God has called you, if God has pushed you to a particular place or a particular ministry, God will appoint and God will equip and God will manifest. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, so you have to ask yourself, Lord, why am I not manifesting? Guess what? Maybe, maybe you missed it. It's okay. The most important thing to understand about our spiritual growth and relationship is that we learn from our mistakes. That's right. Don't let nobody ever tell you, praise God, you don't learn from your mistakes. Some of the best, best lessons you learn is when you messed it up. Amen. Amen. And it's not just natural mistakes. Sometimes we make spiritual mistakes. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why we need the blood of Christ. Yeah. That's why we need forgiveness. So that's why we need, amen, God to help us because, amen. But from those things, those things are not really there to destroy you. They're there to help build you into a better person. Amen. 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 Praise God. Even a body, even a bodybuilder, when he goes into the gym, he intensely goes into the gym to break his muscles down. Amen. Amen. And after a while, guess what happens to the muscles? They get a little stronger. They get stronger. Then he goes back to he telling you if you tell somebody I'm going to the gym today, oh, really going to the gym? I'm going to the gym. I'm going to break every muscle down in my body. Amen. They think something wrong with you. Amen. But that's what you do when you go to the gym. And when it happens, after a period of few times, few days, guess what? Those muscles get what? Get stronger. stronger. And you go do the same thing and you keep getting what? Stronger and stronger and stronger. There is a sense of being broken down. Pray that you can be built back up again. Amen. That's why the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. That in due season, he shall what? Raise you up. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Same concept. But when he talks about being tutors, he says, even so we are children, we're bonds under the elements of this world. So now Paul is now equating here, praise God, that uh, there comes a time, amen, where we have to mature and grow in God. But he talks about the elements of the world. So we have a heir and we have a servant. They come in the house together. They got two different trajectories, though they are experiencing the same thing. Amen. The Bible says that what? Let the wheat and the tear do what? Grow together. Grow together. Praise God. In every church, in every church, there are people who are saved and people who are not. Amen. Amen. And some people come in and get saved, and some people will never be saved. Why? Really, it's based on the condition of their heart. That's right. In every church, you have people who are wealthy and people who are what? Not as wealthy. Mm -hmm. Jesus said what? The poor you have with how long? Always. The poor you won't have with you always. Praise God. But that does not make any difference from us when it comes to God. Amen, man. God, praise the Lord, amen, in the Old Testament, when he told the children of Israel to come to him, amen, and offer the first sacrifice on Mount Sinai, he said, praise God, let every person bring a half, half a shekel of silver. He said, let, let, let the poor give no less and let the rich give no more. Why do you think that is? God is, God, and I'm going to lead to my next point. God is not about, amen, how much you can do or how much you can't do. It's about the, it's about the condition of your heart. Amen. 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 And it's about obeying God for what he wants you to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some people have the ability to do more than others. This doesn't mean I'm more saved than you. That's right, man. God's just giving me the ability to do more. And that's all it is. But guess what? Too much is given. Too much is required. Too much is required. Praise the Lord. But it doesn't make me any better than anybody else. That's right. I shouldn't want to take what I got and help somebody else out. Amen. Say, come on, we can we can all make this make do what? Do and do better what? Together. Yeah. Amen. So here, amen, we have here, but he said that these these two are under the bondage and the elements of the world. What is the world's mentality? This is talking about the mentality of the world. What is the mentality of the world? I'm gonna tell you what the mentality of the world is. The mentality of the world is that I help my own self out. That's right. I pull myself up by my own 
bootstraps. Can we heard that? Have we heard that before? Mm-hmm. What's, uh, I'm, I got to step on somebody to get up a little above a little higher. Amen. That's the mentality. And those things right there did what? Kept us where? In bondage. It keeps us in bondage. Amen. I can't do that in the church. Oh, no, let me rephrase that. I should not do that in the church. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You are a child of the Most High. Amen. Praise God. And I should not step on you to try to get a little higher in position. Where God is still God no matter where I'm at. Because I'm still under God no matter where I go. Amen. Amen. God, I'm still under God. No matter if I'm a brother or I get a title, it doesn't matter. I'm still, uh, 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 as, as mom used to say, they still got to put their pants on one leg at a time like you two. Amen. <laughs> amen. Can we say amen? amen. Praise God. They still got to get them to wash, wash their face. Guess what? If, if, if you're not careful, pray God, let them not wash for a few days. Okay, I'll reach out. You're going to still be dirty. That's Ain't right. done nothing. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. We have to understand, praise God, that, that status, amen, doesn't mean nothing to God because God holds the greatest status. Amen. So he's talking about these, these things and these elements of the world keeps us in bondage. But guess what? When we come to so so what happens is those type of thought processes, amen, it says in verse three, begin to amen infuse itself in the church. If I just work a little harder, if I just try a little tougher, if I just keep pushing, God, God will give me more favor. Anybody heard that before? Amen. But don't you know that the favor of God has absolutely nothing to do with you? Amen. And the grace of God has absolutely nothing to do, to do with you. Right. And the mercy of God has absolutely nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with the God we serve. Amen. 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 And that is what Paul was getting ready to, to do. He says, here, pray God, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent for who? His son, made of a woman, made under the law. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and before I get to that verse, you know, we, 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 and what I'm talking about is that we praise God. The, the 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 thought process of the world sometimes gets us to a place where, Amen. We we work hard, we get more, and guess what? And we get what we deserve. Uh-huh. People call it karma. Come on, somebody. Yeah, mm-hmm. People call it whatever you want to call it. They call it Murphy's law. They call it all kind of ways. Right. Amen. Praise God. When things happen, say, well, guess what? Amen. If, if I do good, guess what? Amen. Good's going to come to me. If I do bad, 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 not going. I don't know why people say, well, if I do bad, I expect good. And if I do good, bad shows up. <laughs> Amen. They always say the nice guy finishes what? Last. Last. But that's not true in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says, for what sober man sold it, that he shall he also reap. Amen. 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 So we so we have to be cautious that we are sowing every single breath we take. We are sowing. Amen. Every word is a seed. Uh-huh. Every act is a seed. Every thought is a seed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But we have to also understand that we don't get everything back we think. That's right. That's called grace. Come on, somebody. Amen. I thank God for grace. Amen. I don't get back everything that I do. That's right. That's called grace. Amen. But what happens is the law was like this element of the world. Remember the law was what? Eye for an eye. Two for two. Two for two. That means if something happened, if you did something, you got to restore what? Sevenfold, fourfold, fivefold. Praise the Lord. And what God was trying to understand, amen, was that, amen, that, that, that he said in the word of God that if you sow to the wind, you're going to reap what? You're going to reap what? A whirlwind. whirlwind. Praise the Lord. But he's talking, to, amen, tonight that we cannot allow for our mindsets to be that way in God. We have to understand, praise God, that grace, the grace of God, which is the book of Galatians is all about, amen, contradicts those thoughts of the world. Amen. That's why, I praise the Lord, someone who is of the world, when you try to go talk to them and you go and give them a biscuit and they ain't done nothing for you, they think you got an angle. Mm, come on. Why are you doing something for me? They're trying to figure out because their mindset is that I ain't done nothing for you, so why are you doing something for me? Right. Mm-hmm. You have to let them know it has absolutely nothing to do about you. It has everything to do with the God I serve. And when you say stuff like that, sometimes they have no idea what you're talking about. Amen. Mm-hmm. And that becomes an opportunity for you. Just, you ain't got to preach to them. You ain't got to yell at them. You ain't got to speak in tongues at them. Amen. You just got to show them some love. Amen. 
That's all you got to do. And love will open the door for God to show up. Because when you know with people who are strictly of the world, praise God, you know, I, I, I said a couple of weeks ago, I said game, oh Jesus, I said game recognize game. Amen. 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 A hustler knows a hustler. That's right. Man. Thank you, Jesus. All of us ain't been saved all our lives. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Praise God. But when you uh, have been, when you used to be a hustler, I used to be able to run certain types of games. Come on, somebody. Come on. And now you're living on the grace side of God. Right. Amen. All your friends and stuff, all the friends you come to, they think you're still trying to run. Now you run a different type of game. That's all. That's all. Amen. I ain't running no more games, brother. This is just God. God's been good to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And when you start talking that way, it's hard for people. To, that's why That's why people need to continue to come to church, continue to hear the word of God, continue to spirit be washed with water by the word of God, because you got to get all that world stuff out of them. Amen. And get God down in them. That's why when people, <laughs> excuse me, first coming to the house of God, and first coming to the church, they're, 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 they're still majority carnal minded. That's right. They may come and get baptized in Jesus' name, They'll come get filled with the Holy Ghost, and two weeks later, they try to run a hustle. Say, hold on, brother. You can't do that no more. Right, right. <laughs> you can't do that no more. What, what, what are you talking about? I, God says this. It's the grace of God. And we have to understand that we have to receive the grace of God Amen. because God is gracious. Amen. God is merciful. So, so, so Paul is letting them know that the church at, Gal at, the, at, at Galatia, praise God, was having a problem with this. They thought, praise God, the harder they work, and the more they did, the more the more they would get. They, they actually did a detour back into the things of what the of what the law taught was that the more I work, the more stuff I do, the more I get in God's good grace. Amen. Church, can I share something with you? You can't. You can't get in no more good grace than what you already are at. Amen. Amen. God sent forth what the Bible says in John three sixteen. Y'all all know it, don't you? For God so loved, so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting. Who believes that? Amen. That means that you already got the best of God. Yeah. You just have to walk in it. You have to let it be revelated to you. You have to let, you have to let, let, let the full package come alive in your life. Amen. Amen. And that is what Paul's trying to help the church of Galatia. He's trying to let you know that when you receive the son, the sonship in God, and you're no longer a servant, but you are heir of salvation, you already got the best of God. Amen. And who am I to keep it from anybody else? Amen. If we're all one in Christ Jesus. Come on. Amen? Amen. So Paul was dealing with some stuff here in this church, wasn't he? He was dealing with what? The, the mentality of people. He was dealing, praise God, amen, that, 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 that raise yourself up by your own bootstraps, being able to work hard. You know, people, you know, people will look at you and look at your ministry and, and, and say that you did something. Come on. <laughs> and you'll be like, I ain't done nothing but showed up every day. I ain't done nothing but prayed and, 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 and dedicated my life to God. Come on. And God's grace and mercy just unfolded. See, Bible says we go from glory to glory. To glory. And from faith, faith to faith. Is that what it says? Amen. See, what happens is when people live, guess what? God gives them faith opportunities. Amen. Can I, I'm going to call this. I hear God. Okay, I never talk about this, but I'm going to let God. I feel God. He gives us faith opportunities. And what happens is I live in that faith opportunity and I let it become active in my life. Mm -hmm. So now I'm living in, let's just call it faith opportunity number one. The next person is given what? The same opportunity. I take my one opportunity and I do what I can with it. And God puts me at step number two. Amen. Amen. Then guess what happens? God, by his grace, gives me another faith opportunity. I go from glory to glory. I go from faith to faith. So now I take my second faith opportunity and I do something with it. And now God starts enlarging me. Amen. The person next to me had the same opportunity, but they blew their faith opportunity. They didn't believe God. Right. Amen. So now, watch this. I haven't done nothing but believe God. And now I'm looking at faith opportunity number three. three. Mm -hmm. See the building of three. 
They had the same three, but they're still at zero. That makes sense? Amen. So what happens is you, you keep trusting God, God keeps building you, and you and these things build and they and they build upon each other, praise God. Amen. And the other person has the same opportunity, but they don't build upon that opportunity. And the next thing you know, 5, 10, 20 years down the road, they try to see how you how 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 are you able to do yes, sir. what you do Amen. when you get up and come to the same job yeah. I come to. Yeah. The reason why it becomes you are you are building, you're going from glory to glory. You're going from faith to faith. Can we say amen? amen. Does, does that make sense? Amen. Because the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. Per is that what the Bible says? Yeah. He reigns on the just yeah. as much as what? The unjust. The unjust. But you got to ask yourself, what you do with your opportunity? Mm. I got I to trust God, church. Amen. Somebody say, just trust God. And so Paul was trying to help us. So, so that's that's how that's how people grow and mature in Christ. And watch this: even when the 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 uh, uh, the destroyer tries to come and try to take my stuff away, I never go all the way back down down to step zero. Right. God always cushions my blow. Amen. I never can start back from the bottom. God always gives me a little bit to start with. That's why faith is so important in church. And he's trying to help the Galatian church understand the same thing. That if we just let people come in and let people begin to do and let people get to love God and let the word of God take faith in people's lives and trust and teach faith and trust in God, God will grow. That's why he says he gives some 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 30, some some, some 30, some 60, some what? Some what? A hundredfold. It depends on how much faith you got. Amen. Praise God. But God's doing all the work. Amen. God, God's putting in all the time. Amen? So he says that, but when the fullness of time has come, guess what? So when I see these two in place and the fullness of time has come, amen, praise God, God sent forth who? His son. His son. His son, right? His son, based on sonship, made of a woman. It means he speaks of the, vir of, of, of the virgin nature of Jesus' birth. Amen. Made of a woman, made where? Under the law. Huh? Under the law. Christ came where? Under bondage. Yeah. Did he not? Yes, sir. He came under the bondage that the law gave us. Remember, the law was our school master, master that told us that we needed a what? A savior. savior. All right? So when the fullness of time comes, praise God, now look what he says. That, that, that now to redeem them, look. So what was the purpose of Jesus, Jesus coming? The law comes. The law puts us under bondage. We're all under bonds. We're born in sin and what? Shape and iniquity. Praise God. But I but but I got an error and I got I got a promise on my life, right? Yep. And the promise shows up to redeem them that were where under the law that we might receive what the adoption of sons. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now let's talk about the adoption of sons. So now, praise God, I've been what adopted into God's family. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when God saved me, God did not just deliver me under the bondage, did not just deliver me from the bondage of sin. Amen. Because God could have just, just delivered me from the bondage of sin, I would have been saved. Right. But not only did he deliver me under the bondage of sin, he also allowed me to become part of who? Him. His family. That's right. Now, praise God, I'm going to show you something here. So, so the, become part of his family, I've been what? Adopted. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about Adam. Adam was God's what? God's son, right? Amen. Adam, praise the Lord, messed up, did he not? Yes, he did. And when Adam messed up, Adam, praise God, we talk about we talk about being redeemed back into the place or being restored in the position that Adam was in, right? Remember, Adam was in a, sin, a sinless state before God. And when when the second Adam came, he was to what? Restore us where? Back, back into that position. God did that. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. God took what? He took, he took the penalty of sin off my life. He took death, pray God, off my life. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. He took, he, he took the pain of sin. He took the penalty of sin. The only thing I'm dealing with right now is the presence of sin. Amen. Because I'm still in what? A sinful world. Right? But I'm saved 
by faith through grace. Amen. It is none other than what? The gift of God. Amen? So though I'm, in, I'm still in the presence of sin, I don't no longer let sin have what? Dominion over me. Over me. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? If you are saved by grace, and if you, praise God, amen, are delivered from the penalty of sin, and you're delivered, amen, from the power of sin, amen, and from death, praise God, sin no longer has dominion over you. Amen. amen. So that now, when sin comes knocking on your door, you got the power to tell it to go on to the next door. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. Or, by choice, you can let sin come on in. Oh, I didn't get no amen there. But it's the truth. Amen. So now, when I have power, that gives me choice. See, what sin did, when sin came in, it took my true power, amen, of serving God and choosing God. See, Adam had a choice, and he made a choice to disobey God. Right. God does what? Covers it with what? God covers it with what? Animal skin. Some, somebody, some animal was what? Blood was what? Shed. Was shed. And God, praise the Lord, amen, uh, uh, used that to cover his nakedness, right? Yeah, but they still had to deal with what? The payment of sin. They still had to deal with it. How did they deal with sin? They, got put, they lost their inheritance. Amen. They lost the garden, right? So one thing I want to understand is that when God forgives us, when God washes us, when God cleanses us, we still got to... We still got to deal with some of the payment of stuff mm -hmm. that we did. Amen. 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 That's why his grace is what? Sufficient. Sufficient. To give me grace to do with all that stuff I did when I was not saved. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Grace is something else, y'all. Amen. Praise God. So, so, so now Jesus comes and redeems us under, amen, from under the law, praise the Lord, and that we might receive what? The adoption of sons. Now, talking about Adam. Adam, praise God, was, was already in the family of God, was he not? Yes, Adam was, 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 was in a position of sonship, praise God. And we are in a position of sonship also by creation. God is our father. God is still the father of what? The world. Of the whole world. He's still, he's still our father of creation, is he not? Yes. But is he our deliverer in redemption? Mm. That's the question you have to ask yourself. There's people out there who say, oh, God is my father. Then that's a true statement. Amen. But, but God is my father in creation. God made everything. Go back and read, read, read Genesis, the first couple of chapters. And the Lord God said, and God said, and God said, amen, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. When he gets to man, he says, and the Lord God said. The he Lord changes God. his position. Right. He changes, amen, from Elohim to El Shaddai unto Jehovah. Mm. El Shaddai means he's the almighty God. That means he's over everything. Right. But Jehovah means he's become my father. You have to know your position when it comes to God. I don't want to deal with God as almighty. Mm. I want to deal with God as my father. Amen. Because when I deal with God as my father, guess what? They give me access that other people don't have. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost gives us. I'm going to show you that here. It's coming up. So adoption means I've been brought into whose family? God. Into God's family. Now adoption is not something that is natural. Adoption is a legal document. Amen. When someone is adopted, they got to sign some papers. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. And then they become that person's legal offspring. Amen. Legal heir. Everything is legal, though they have no blood relationship. Amen. 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 Church of the living God. When Jesus died on the cross, what did he say at the Last Supper? He said, Behold, I give unto you a what kind of commandment? A new. A new legal document. No longer is it written in the blood of bulls. And a ram. Right. But this legal document is written in whose blood? His blood. His blood. In his blood. Mm -hmm. Jesus signed the document. Amen. Amen. That's why we should sing that song. I'm going way back to the queen. But the blood has signed Amen. 
My name. Amen. Somebody know I'm talking about don't you? That's what that's what that song talks about. It talks about how I was I was adopted into God's family. Amen. And, an, and an adoption has to be an agreement between two parties. Amen. God signed the papers at the cross that I might not just be saved, but I might be coming to God's family. Amen. And no longer now I am an heir of salvation. So not only did he restore me Come on. in salvation, he gave me another name. Amen. No longer do, and guess what happens? When you adopt somebody, you have the right to either keep your name yes, sir. or get a new name. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. When we come into Christ, you need to get rid of your old name. Come on. Because some of y'all got some names we can't even say in church. <laughs> but now, the blood, someone the door, the blood has signed my name. So now, my name is called who? The son or the daughter of the Most High God. Amen. I, my name used to be whatever. Now, I, my name is what? Redeemed. My name used to be whatever, sin, but now my name is what? Consecrated. My name used to be whatever, but now my name is what? Forgiven. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's my name now, and it's done in the blood. Yeah. Praise God. So, so God did what? We, that, that we might receive what? The adoption. We, we are heirs of salvation through adoption. Amen. God legally made this happen. And this is what Paul was talking about. Now, remember... Peter had a problem. Y'all remember Brother Peter? Mm -hmm. Peter went down to Cornelius' house, didn't he? Sure did. At this time, the Holy Ghost was only given to those who were of Judea. Correct. Peter went down to Cornelius' house. He, the Bible says he wasn't the, of the Italian band. Mm -hmm. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. He was of the Italian band. Praise God. That means he was a Gentile. Gentile. And the next thing you know, Peter go down there and start talking, and the Holy Ghost just start falling out the sky. Amen. And it messed Peter up. Because at this point, According to, the, to, to, to Dr. Luke, because Luke writes the book of Acts, that the Holy Ghost was only given to those who were of like precious faith. That's right. Je Jews. But now God did what? He poured out on who? On all, all men. All men. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And that's always been the plan of God that we, praise God, get into the plan of God. Blessed is the, Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not the in the God. council. Of the ungodly, nor standeth, or sitteth, or standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scorn. Was that what it says? That, that second clause, blessed the man that standeth not in the way of sinners. Of sinners. Mm -hmm. The first psalm in the book, in the second clause, in the first psalms, tells us that we got to get out of the way of people trying to get to God. Come on now. Too many times people Lord Jesus come on. have gotten the way of people trying to get to God because they weren't dressed the way you thought they should have been dressed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on. In the second clause of the first song yes, sir. in the book come on somebody. Amen. People are stood in the way of people trying to get to God because they were of a different color than they were. Come on now. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. You get a warning in the first Psalms in the second clause. Mm. You will be held in contempt uh -uh. of the high court of God. Come on. Man. When God runs your record and say, you stood in the way of somebody trying to get to me. That's right. Either Consciously, and I believe also unconsciously. Yes, sir. Brother, text you. You on your way to church? You know the brother ain't saved, but because you didn't plan well, and because you running late, you ain't got time to go get that brother. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> and you know they're not saved. Come on. And because you're more concerned about. What people are going to say with you being late than about the concern of that brother. Of that soul, that's right. That soul, that's right. Come I on. believe God's going to hold us accountable. Come on, man. 
Because the only reason why you late is because you you plan for it. Right. And I believe, and, and, and that is an aspect of what? Standing in the way. In the way of a sinner. Because the only way that brother is gonna is gonna get to church is that they need a ride. Amen. And when of course they know that going to a sanctified Holy Ghost church is you. Come on, man. <laughs> they could have been any church, but they called you up. Uh-huh. You could have just said, hey, look, I gotta go get this. somebody called me. And they want to come to church. They don't, they're not, and you know they're not saved. Right, right. You need to go and get that brother. For real. Mm-hmm. Call somebody to church, tell them you're gonna be a little late. But I got a soul. I'm on I'm, I'm on a soul mission this morning. Come on, somebody. Amen. We gotta understand. We gotta keep we gotta keep our focus. Uh, somebody said we gotta keep we gotta keep the main thing, the main thing. It's still about saving souls. Amen. Still about is your soul saved? Amen. Whether I got an eighth grade degree, a high school degree, an associate's degree, a certificate, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, an EDS. A PhD or a specialty, I still need to understand at the end of the day, it's about to make sure that doing what I can to help somebody be saved. Amen. Amen? Because that's those are worldly things. And the things of the world are going to do what? Pass away. Pass away. Pass away. But what you do for God is going to stand for how long? Forever. Forever. You got to ask yourself, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. That's what Paul's trying to help the church of Galatians do. Can we say amen? Amen. He's trying to help them say, look, brothers, look, look, brothers, they're different. They're going to, they got different ways about them. They got different things, but they still have a soul. And that soul still needs to be what? Amen. Still needs to be saved. And they're going to bring a different way, a different field. But guess what? God's going to give you the grace to understand how to deal with that and grow. And watch this. A lot of times you benefit from differences mm-hmm. and not from similarities. Amen. Why does biology in a natural sense have mutations? Because though some may be deadly, it's better to have a mutation to be different and continue to live and grow and change than to die and become extinct. Too many people don't want to change. And see, that's what happens in the church right now. God is going through the church, church world right now. And those who are refusing to change, guess what's going to happen to them? They're going to die. Amen. And those who are willing to make a change and mutate, they're going to do what? Find a niche to be able to thrive in. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. amen? I know it's tough. I know it's rough. Even I got some changes I got to make. Some days I like, Lord Jesus, this thing different. <laughs> but God is God's helping us and helping me. So you know what, Brian? Either you change or you die. Mm-hmm. Can we say Amen. amen. So I don't want to die. The Bible declares I want to live. Amen. And see what? The salvation of God. Amen? Amen. So church, some things, are think, some things are changing. Some things are adjusting. But guess what? It's going to bring life to us. And that's what Paul is trying to help the church in Galatia. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we have, so that we might receive this adoption of sons. We have been adopted by God. Can we say amen? amen? Let me see what we got here. Praise God. Okay. Because ye are sons. So now look. He says that we might receive what? The adoption of sons. So now, I'm not a slave. I'm an heir, right? Amen. I've been adopted into God's family through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got the best thing God has to offer right now. I'm baptized in Jesus' name and full of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing better that I got than I can get from God. Amen. There are different greater manifestations. But there's nothing, in its true essence, there's nothing greater. There's no higher quality of what God has than, his, than through his salvation. Praise the Lord. There, there is no grade A salvation and no grade B salvation. Hello, I get no amen. Let me say it again. Praise God. There is one salvation. Amen. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you got the best God has. Amen. God, God didn't, didn't give you the Holy Ghost and kept the best Holy Ghost for someplace else. <laughs> he gave you the best he had. Amen. And he gave it to you first. Amen. When you started, when you got the Holy Ghost, you got the best thing heaven had to offer. That's right. Man. First time. Remember, they said, Jesus, turn water into wine. Oh, you held, you held the best out for last. 
No. God gave his best when? First. Amen? Amen. Okay, look. He says, because now, because now I know I'm a son. I got any sons and daughters of God in here? Amen. Got anybody that adopted into God's family right now? Amen. Anybody glad about it? Yes. Amen. Because we sons, he says, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying what? Daddy! <laughs> Have you called God daddy lately? Come on now. See, you call, oh God, mm -hmm. oh Father. Come on, somebody. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. That's being respectful. Mm -hmm. But because I understand, but when I, I, when I need something. Come on. I used to call my father, leaving Bible class up until last year until he passed away. I called Wednesday was our day to talk. Because yeah. there was a time when, we, when my commute was an hour after church, and he would pick up the phone and call me and make sure I made it home. Mm. He told me that when he was dying. He said, son, I just called me so you didn't need to drive right off the road. <laughs> 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 I said, oh, you slick, pops. But that's what daddies do. Mm -hmm. They do stuff you don't even know nothing about. But I would not say, I would pick up the phone. Hey, hey, Pops, how you doing? Hey, Dad. That's what I would say. I wouldn't be saying, oh, Father, how you doing, Dad? No, I'd be like, hey, Dad, how you doing? It was a, it was a sense of what? Closeness. Mm -hmm. It was a sense of intimate. Watch this. With 125% of all due respect. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Because I, watch this, because there was a time when me and my dad, we didn't even talk to one another. Mm. When I was, when I was 20, 20 something. <laughs> Feeling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time we didn't even talk to him, it be months before I talked to him. Mm. Praise God. But it came with now with a sense of, I took the time and built a relationship. Amen. You can call God daddy. Come on now. Not just when you want something, but when you took the time and built a relationship. relationship. And when you call him, he understands that it's nothing but respect. Amen. As a matter of fact, reaching out to him is a sign of respect. Amen. I would call and talk to him and ask him and, and, and discuss things with him. Amen. And, I, and there's certain things that I would not do until I talked to him. Right. And it was a sign of what? Because I built a what? Relationship. Relationship. When you let the spirit, I'm gonna stop right here tonight. I'm, I'm gonna let this mel mel meditate, meditate. That's a new word. <laughs> I'm gonna let you meditate and let this resonate in your spirit. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you meditate and let it marinate. I put the two words together, Lord. Have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> when you have meditated on God's word and let it marinate in your spirit, you can cry. With the Spirit of God, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. Father. Daddy, I need something. Daddy, 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 daddy. Now I got a little guy home, 5.45 a.m. Daddy, guess what I do? I get up, and I go see what's happening. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because we have a what? Relationship. relationship. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We got to. And so, so this shows that there's a sense of intimacy that God wants to have with you. Amen. But if you have to build what? A relationship. He says, wherefore thou there are no, art, uh, thou art no more what? A servant. A servant, but a what? A son. A what? A son. And if a son, then what? An heir. An heir of God through who? Through Christ. This week, just this next few, six, five, four days, see if you can call God Dad. Come on, man. Come on, somebody. Amen. This is what God wants to be. Because see, what happens is God wants to have an intimate and close relationship with you. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? And see, I believe when we get to this place of relationship with God, there are certain things that, are, that you automatically are not going to do no more. Because you don't want to destroy relationship. that relationship. Right. Amen. 
Because yeah. daddy found out you're doing that, guess what? You'd be like, uh, Bob. <laughs> Pops. Might even call him by his last name. Yeah. But when you are open and honest before God, and God wants to have that, and not only will you speak to him, he will speak to you. Amen. There's a place in God, and I'm going to close on this, that, 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 that one of the gospel writers write about, that there's a place that you can be with God, that God will show you things that are getting ready to come to pass. Amen. What a relationship to have with God, that I can walk so close with him, that he will actually speak of things of what's getting ready to take place, Amen. so I can be prepared for those things. Amen. What a place. And guess what? That's not like a, a special place. Right. That place is open for those who are willing to go. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The question I ask for you tonight, are you willing to go all the way for God? Amen? Amen? Yeah. We're going to pick up here. I hope someone said to encourage you on the night. God bless you, God. I want to say a word of prayer over our lives tonight. Also, remember, if you want to give and support the ministry, you can do that at the website. Amen. Giving, amen, is not an afterthought. It's just in the proper place. Amen. Amen. When we talk about giving and being supportive, the Bible says money answer what? All what? things. All things. But but the word should have preeminence. Amen. Amen. And prayer should have preeminence. Amen. So that's why we talk about giving at the end. Amen. Amen. But giving becomes a manifestation of my relationship. It's not my relationship. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord Father, that as we got on this week, we have challenged the people, your sons and daughters, to develop Lord. a relationship with you, Hallelujah. whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. Father. Yes. Lord, we need you like never before. Lord, we need you to touch our hearts and our minds, Lord. And God, in the name of Jesus, anything in us that's not like you, Lord, remove it so we can continue to call you daddy. Mm -hmm. Continue to reach out to you. Continue to cry, oh God. And Lord, not only speak to you, but to speak to us and guide us as sons. When it's time appointed, you're going to make us ruler over much. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Let your blood cover and will be done. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Join us again on our next broadcast. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.